Okay, so now we said uh, James Watt discovered, invented, in fact, the steam engine and we started burning lots of coal but then where did all this coal come from? I already mentioned a few times that in the past there were vegetation that went from the ocean to land and started growing and took up so much CO2 through photosynthesis that they cooled down the climate and made an ice age and a snowball maybe where the uh, complete planet would have been covered in snow and ice so maybe that's what created the coal. So let's look a little bit more at this coal business by starting with the water vapor engine again. Right? So this did start off the, the industrial revolution. Put a pan of water on the heat and after a while the lid will start to rattle up and down and this simple idea would have you know triggered, sparked an imagination in a smart guy like James Watt this is because the water is turning into vapor and the water vapor or steam takes up more room than liquid water and when it wants more volume it can force the lid up so the steam is pushing against the lid because it wants to escape this is how heat causes movement this simple trick is the basis of a steam engine and the steam engine was the basis of the industrial revolution it could just as easily be called the water vapor engine because water vapor and steam are the same thing so you have fire you have water and voila you got water vapor still you can't use a pan of water to make steam train run or to power a weaving machine fortunately there were, invent there were inventors around at that time who understood how these kinds of things worked and they kept on tinkering away until they had invented a decent steam engine that was large enough to drive big things around 250 years ago James Watt figured it out a steam machine that could provide enough power to take over the heavy work done by humans and horses Horses were the main mode of pulling things around. It's called the horsepower, and of course, we had bulls and cows pulling things, donkeys doing things as well. James Watt was from Scotland, and so the Industrial Revolution began in the Great Britain of the time as a result of new agricultural techniques. The population there grew quickly as well. It was true for all over the, you know, all the uh, centers of human existence at the time it was almost impossible to spin yarn weave fabric and make clothes for everyone by hand but after the invention of the steam engine they had weaving machines and spinning machines that were powered by steam these were big 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 successes more and more factories were built with more and more machines in the Great Britain and later in the rest of Europe and of course in America and also in Asia because the more the factories you build the more the workers you need so you need to go everywhere to find people to put to work the steam engine was a truly amazing invention if you think about it before it came along people had only wind water and muscle power to get things moving windmills pumped away water to make new land called a Holders. Water mills mill the grain, horses pull the carts, and people move. Wo sorry, people wove fabrics by hand. The steam engine could do all of that better and faster, and the steam engine never got tired. You just had to make sure that there was enough s fuel to heat the water so you keep providing fuel and heat the water when you keep getting steam. That fuel was of course coal because they had almost run out of wood by then. All the nearby forests were cut for burning or for agriculture. So we had to burn coal. The people took coal out of the ground first from places where it was not too deep because otherwise the water in the ground could cause problems. But the invention of steam engine allowed them to go deeper with drills driven by steam. The steam engine pumped the groundwater out of the mach uh, out of the mine as well so now mines could fetch the coal from a depth of kilometers down this coal had been trapped down there for around 300 million years that's how 
old this photosynthesized material was that got converted into coal right so l look at how this plants material got buried and became coal let's start with mashed marsh plants let's go back 300 million years in time to the age of the big scary critters there are no sign of any dinosaurs yet they came around 250 million years ago much of the world is covered with trees and plants and leaves at the time it's hot and humid like a tropical swimming paradise the swamp is full of ferns and strange plants with what looked like feathers or leaf feathers for leaves insects are buzzing all around now and then one of the first reptiles snatches a bug from the air they have to watch out for the meganora doe that's the giant dragonfly with wings the size of a magpie why because at that time the entire ecosystem forests were different animals and insects and birds were different because birds may not have been around yet so we have to see because it's 300 million years ago and dragonflies nobody was eating dragonflies where dragonflies were flying around with giant wings lazily they didn't have to move fast to avoid somebody snatching them other than this snake that came out maybe and ate them once in a while so here is a swamp and the swamp has a lot of water so what the leaves that fall into the water don't rot so easily so more leaves fall on top just like snow falls and more snow falls and becomes glacial you start you keep putting leaves on top of leaves that remains hydrocarbon or sugar or carbohydrates and then some climate change happens and you put some sand and clay on top and you don't even know that there is plant material getting crushed underneath and soon that kind of pressure and temperature as more and more soil falls and other things happen tends to become pressurized and becomes coal right so we know about the Maganura because of a fossil that was found deep inside a French coal mine it is quite amazing that an insect with such delicate wings was preserved for 300 million years most of the other giant dragonflies were eaten up or rotted away but the Maganura must have been must have fallen into a swamp after its death where there were no fish to eat it that was quite likely as lots of swamps contain hardly any oxygen and you need oxygen in the water for fish to live right just like we need oxygen that meant that the dragonfly didn't rot when it sank to the bottom and just got preserved it's a miracle that the dragonfly wasn't crushed and crumpled thousands of them probably ended up at the bottom of the swamp with just a few remainings so wonderfully intact the dragonflies disappeared among the dead trees, plants and leaves that also tend uh, ended up in the swamp. All of these deposited a huge load of carbon in the ground because photosynthesis, photosynthesis, photosynthesis and all the animals and insects are also carbon of course. Right? So this sank deeper and deeper. Very slowly a sort of sponge made up of dead plant matter developed in the water. It's called peat. P-E-A-T. If you dry peat, you can use it as fuel. Which makes sense because it's made up of wood and plants as well. We use wood as a fuel, for example, in campfires or in fireplaces or for cooking. We also use plants as fuel, like when you eat sprouts and spinach for energy, your body burns them and they give you energy. Wood and plants also contain energy the same way because it is taking sun's energy, taking CO2, taking water and making plants, carbohydrates and sugar. The more carbon they contain, the more energy they have from the sun converted to carbohydrates and that's the thing about coal. Coal is super compressed peat. Over millions of years the peat ended up deeper and deeper in the earth where there is much hotter temperature. Thick layers of sand and clay formed on top of it and dinosaurs stomped around on it as we see here. There have been times when there were seas above the peatlands that got compressed and sat quietly under the ground. All those layers pressed the peat more and more tightly together, squeezing the water and oxygen out of it and making it harder and harder. 
more and more carbon was left and there were therefore more energy think about it a layer of 10 meters of coal you're digging them up and pulling them out so 10 meters of coal was once a layer of 100 meters of peat that got compressed that's why a kilogram of coal burns longer than a lot of peat and even longer than a kilogram of wood plants disappeared under the ground like this in many places on earth not only 300 million years ago but also before that and after that and it's still happening now but the age of the Meganura in the age of the Meganura there were lots and lots of forests that disappeared into the swamps for a very long time and which are now being brought back to the surface as coal we just mine them and dig them up and you can see nice big crocodile wandering around with all kinds of nice ferns and plants and cacti and tall tree and a big old dragonfly flying around because it was not scared of any predator plants disappeared again not only 300 million years but also before and after but in the age of the Meganura there were lots and lots of forests that disappeared into the swamps and we are now digging them up the coal contains lots of fossils mainly of ferns and other plants but very occasionally of a prehistoric creature like the Meganura so that's why we call it call fuels such as coal as fossil fuels all this peat and animals getting compressed and the fossils are in them usually fossil also means old so fossil fuel also means old fuel there are two other fossil fuels oil and natural gas so you can see this nice figure showing plankton which is fish food so plankton means planktos in Greece as we said that drifts around but it can swim or change direction usually they just flow, follow the currents most of the phytoplankton can take light and produce you know photosynthesis and carbohydrates just like plants on land and then there are zooplankton which eat the phytoplankton and then there are little fish that eat the zooplankton and big fish eat the little fish and so on and then you have big massive sharks and they fall to the bottom of the ocean and they get compressed and get converted into sediments and fossil fuels and so on as well okay so let's come back and look at the crushed sea creatures in the next podcast and you'll be amazed where all you can find crushed sea creatures because remember ocean went up and down and the continents moved so what is now land what is now in the middle of a big continent may have been a part of the ocean in the past amazing stories coming up kids so come back and listen to more on crushed sea creatures okay see you